Welcome to the 30 minute acrylic portrait where we paint an acrylic portrait in a half an hour. Hope you're doing well. We're working on a new portrait today and I apologize if I'm a little under the weather, but I figured I'm not going to let this stop me from painting a portrait. So if you're new to the 30 minute acrylic portrait concept, it is where we do a quick study uh, without a lot of fuss and we're just basically trying to uh, loosen up with our portrait painting and be getting the flow again if you haven't done painting for a while. Um, it's no pressure. I mean, yes, you're, you know, timing yourself, but you're not expecting to create a masterpiece. Just enjoying the process, growing in your skills as a portrait painter, learning how to mix color, uh, establish form. And uh, if you do this on a regular basis, as I hope to do, <laughs> I've tried many times, but I'm not going to give up on, on this habit, instilling this habit, you will find that your portrait painting skills will increase. It's inevitable because as you practice, you grow. So this is what we're working on is a image of this young lady here. I like it. It's got a lot of contrast. Uh, this is uh, from Living Waters Ministries. Uh, it's a still shot of one of Ray Comfort's videos where he interviews people and shares his faith as a Christian with them. And you guys can get a nice image from those still shots. I have permission to paint from these still shots here. And so that's what we're going to do. Now let's open up with a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father, I ask a blessing here on this session here of the 30 minute acrylic portrait. I just pray you bless it. Enable me to show the students watching how to mix color, how to uh, establish form and uh, likeness in a quick way. I pray they'd enjoy the process. I pray I would enjoy the process and that our portrait painting skills would grow as a result of doing this together. So Lord, bless them, keep them in good health, and uh, give you the thanks for the talent you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's join in. We're going to set the timer here for 30 minutes. And when that timer stops, you're going to hear it, and then I'll basically put down my brush within a couple of brush strokes, but it'll, it'll keep me on track. Uh, so we have this canvas uh, that's pre toned and ready to go. And I'm just going to start out by establishing the form. We want to basically just get a sense of the position of her head and facial features. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab a color for that. We'll take some raw umber dark, mix it with some matte medium just to make it translucent. And that is usually a pretty good color um, to use for blocking in the form for just getting the overall sense of anatomy and the likeness. And we want it to be fairly light, uh, translucent, just so you know I can make any adjustments if I need to do that. So I'll begin by just, again, plotting things out based on what I'm seeing in my reference photo. Head is kind of close to the top in the reference photo. I'll pull it down just a little bit more, just so we don't have that uh, visual tangent. I'm observing the shape of her face. You know, she does kind of have an oval uh, shaped head and you know, I want to establish that form in. So I'm just kind of observing that and I want to leave a little bit of room uh, for the bottom uh, so I can get in, you know, some of the bust, you know, a little bit of the neck, even though this is a very close cropped in image here. Um, I want the composition to be as good as possible for this. So we've got that. We've got her neck right there. And then we're going to plot in a little bit of her uh, shoulder right here, which basically cuts up at that intersection of her chin, jawline, and neck. So we just get that in. You probably could just barely see what we're doing here, but I, I like to keep it really light and just so I can adjust it if I need to. So I'm not going to erase anything, I'm not sketching anything with pencil. This is all freehand a la prima and no video editing here. Uh, just painting what you see right in front of you here, almost as if we're doing it live. Okay. And then she does have her ear here. I want to note the position of the ear somewhere about there and then let's uh get in her position of her eyes closer to the top of the head based on this so the eyebrows are going to come up a little bit and we look at the overall uh shape of the eyes and note the 
much like the angle of her eyebrows. Are they straight? Are they curved? Well, hers are kind of straight, so we want to get that in. But we do want to have a little bit of distance between uh, the opening of the eyes and her eyebrows. So I'm going to make sure I get that in. And, you know, she's got kind of rounded eyes when you actually look at the shape of them. Um, but they're not open super wide, so that creates these almost uh, football shapes that we're trying to capture here. The concentric eyelid folds underneath, and then the uh, opening. Now we go down to the nose. We want to get that overall position in. The mouth comes down a little bit lower. Get the rough shape of the lips. Lips kind of come up like that are some strong shadows. We want to make sure we get those in as much as we can. Block in the hair a little bit. Okay. If I'm pretty satisfied with my overall anatomical structure I can start putting in some bolder colors here and I don't really have a lot of time with this to get a perfect likeness although I think if I do more of these I'll get better at it and it's going to improve my portrait painting skills even though I've been painting for boy 30 years we can always get better so I want to uh, commit to doing this more often whether I feel like it or not and uh, I think if you do the same, your portrait painting skills will grow. I thought, should I do this even though I'm not feeling well today and I'm fighting a cold? And I thought, well, let's not make any excuses. Let's just do it. Okay. So if I uh, cough or sneeze or anything, please excuse me. Because I'm not, not planning on editing that out. We're just going to keep this video nice and raw here. Um, just like I do for most of my 30-minute acrylic portraits. Okay, so now let's go ahead and block in some major shadow shapes. We can either do that or block in the highlights. I think we'll, uh, we'll block in some of the major shadow shapes first. Let's do that. So we're going to take Romber Dark, Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of titanium white to make it opaque. And then we're going to kind of block in the eyebrow area here and uh, just get these major shadow shapes in. Just try to keep it more chiroscuro at this point. If I have time, I'll come back in and do a little bit of adjusting. We're just basically, again, putting in the shadows right now. All right, now let's put in the structure of the lips here as simply as we can. Try to get that gesture of the form of the shadow that the lip is casting onto the chin. And then we've got the cheek structure there on the side. We get that in and we'll kind of block in the hair, although that could get a little darker. So I add just a little bit more ultramarine blue to that. Bit of alizarin crimson. And some raw umber dark. I just make that a little darker. And we'll get that hair color in. Just block that in simply as we can. 
Got a little bit of a part on the top and her hair is quite thin. At least that's how it appears in the camera. Although it's probably some camera distortion, I'm guessing, that's taking place on this. Okay. Grab a different round brush for this. And as far as my palette goes, it's just the standard colors. I forgot to mention that to you. Romber Dark, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Naphthal Red. Organic orange, Indian yellow, and titanium white. So if you want to paint this along with me, those are the colors that I'm using. All right. So now we've got that, and let's go ahead and block in some of the coloring for the clothing here. Block that in as simply as we can. Turn the brush. Have to mix this a bit more. Trying to go as opaque as we can. And just kind of brush that as smoothly as we can here. Use a slightly larger brush just to help me smooth that out. Okay. I'll go ahead and switch to our other brush here. Let's take a filbert brush and we'll put in some of the lighter values in the face. Mix up some titanium white, raw sienna, and some organic orange. Kind of has a nice reddish tint. That'll give us our basic flesh tone color. Just a little more titanium white. Okay. Just something we can start out with here. And we'll just fill this in. Doing some kind of short choppy strokes and then longer strokes to smooth it out. Trying to get a decent amount of brush pressure in here. Add some one over the nose. And we get some in the cheeks as well. All right. Have a strong contrast here on the lip area. So we want to make sure we get that in. Get a little bit on the ear and down to that lower area. So now we want to switch into a mid tone. I'm going to grab flat brush here for that small flat brush and we'll take some burnt sienna mix it with a little bit of raw umber dark and we'll use that on the lower skin tones here so just a little bit of a darker color on this part 
We'll blend these together a little bit. And we're going to fill, actually let's add a bit of raw umber dark to this color. Make it darker yet. Mix it into that flesh tone so it's somewhat opaque. We're going to use this for the area down below here. This area on her chin and neck. Yeah, blend these around a bit. A little shading, a little shading on the inside. Bring this across the eyebrow ridge. A little shading on the inside of the eyes. Okay, now I think I can switch to my round brush. Most of the areas are filled in. And let's do that. Let's switch to the round brush and we're going to create um, a lip color using a little bit of napful red. We're going to bring it into the mid-tone, which is this color here. So we have our shadows, mid-tones, and lighter mid-tones. We haven't done the highlights yet. We mix the red into this mid-tone, which should help it to work pretty nicely. And that's going to be the basis of our lip color. Let's just actually lighten this up a little bit more and we'll add a tiny bit of organic orange. Okay, and we'll pop this in right here. It's very easy to go too strong on the lip color. Even with what I have here mixing in these other tones, it's a little too red. So I'm going to add some raw sienna to this, plus some of the lighter color. And then I'm going to go back in and just adjust it, make it a little bit earthier. We'll get the darker bottom of the lip here. And then we're going to go and grab a lighter color with some organic orange, just to warm it up a bit. And we'll place that right here on the inside. And then let's pull some of this redder color into the mixture. And we're going to place that right along the edge and just kind of blend it together and get a sense of gradation, sense of shading in there. And we're about the halfway mark here, so still plenty of time, but I don't want to slack off. <laughs> I want to make sure I can get this done as best as I can. All right, I'm going to grab a little more of this lip color, and yeah, I think that's good. I do want to get some of the redder tint on the nose, but I don't want it to be too strong, so I'll mitigate it by adding some of the earthy color here with the addition of a bit of raw sienna. And we'll add that to the bottom of her nose. And just try to get some of that shape dialed in. And we'll cut in a little bit more here. Now I do want to get in some of the shapes of the eyes using this kind of nose and lip color. So we're showing that upper eyelid fold, you know, as a light is shining onto it. And then the lower part just a bit. That's catching some of the light. Let's mix this darker color into the darker mid-tone. Remember that kind of hair color that we had? And we're going to add a bit of burnt sienna. Just warm that up a little. And then we're going to use that uh, right in here in the eyes. We'll warm it up just a bit more. Add a little more burnt sienna. There, put it right in here, and that should just give us a little bit more visual information where we can see the eyes. 
I'll fill this in in the middle. Try to get some separation between the uh, eyebrows and the skull socket underneath. Get a little shading in under the eyes right there. And her eyelash is kind of casting some shadow too. It's like I smeared a little bit on her nose, giving her some freckles. Not sure how that happened, but let's just kind of fix that up here. Okay. Do you want to fix this bottom area a little bit? <laughs> I'm going to grab this color here and we're going to uh, let's go to the other camera. We're going to place that right in here on the chin. There we go. That's good. Spray my palette a little bit, keep everything nice and damp. Otherwise, it gets really, really hard to work with the paint. Okay. So we'll get a little bit of shading here on the bottom of the cheek. And then there's just a little bit of color here on the uh, jaw. He's got kind of an interesting expression we're capturing. I'm going to pull this uh, somewhat warmer color mid-tone. I'm going to put that in the nasal labial fold. That laugh line right there. Let's kind of capture that. And then on this other side, get some shading in there. I'm going to go and get a little bit of highlight under the shadow of the nose. Just put that in. And then a little highlight right in here as well. Okay, and we'll get a little more shading on the forehead. Some warmer colors in here. And let's see, just want to get a little shadow under the neck area. So we're going to go with this darkest color we've got here. And we're going to bring that into the lighter part. We just kind of mix them together rather than reinventing the wheel and mixing a whole new color. And I'm going to put that under the chin. Just like that. Okay, and we'll get a little blend in here, which should be nice. And we'll add a little bit of a lighter color, get even more of a blend. And then I, I do want to lighten up this uh, shadow on the chin. I'm just going to add a little bit of a warmer tint to that pulling in the lip color into it so it's a little redder and it's going to go right down there but not too not too light or it's going to throw things off so I'm just going to go over that lighten it up a bit okay we'll grab a little bit of a lighter color pop it in right there um, darker color up in here. I want to get some detail for her eyes. So we're going to take some raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, mix them together with just a little bit of a lizard crimson. Get a nice dark color there. And let's pop it in for the eyes. There we go. Somebody keeps trying to message me here. It always happens when I paint, I forget to turn off my phone. So I better go and shut that off. <laughs> Otherwise all those little dings on the phone distract me. It's the real life of a portrait painter. All right. All right, I want to just clarify the edge here. And we'll just fill this in a little bit.
All right, good. Now I do want to adjust that shape of the shadow being cast by your nose. So let's take this lighter color here and we'll bring this right underneath just to adjust that a little bit. You can see it needs to really come down at more of an angle. And then just so it doesn't look like a strange mustache, we need to clarify that color a little bit more. So let's uh, grab some of this darker color here. And we're going to put that in right underneath. Just adjust that a little bit. Grab a slightly lighter color and put that in. Okay, I want to just slightly adjust the uh, lip color. So I'm going to darken it a bit on the right hand side as it's turning to form. That part is uh, in shadow. We have the light coming a little bit from above and slightly to the left. So we want to make sure we're getting, you know, that particular aspect in. I also want to get a more robust color for the ear with some um, napful red. And we'll place that in right inside there. And then another right on top and then a slightly darker color to just um, work with that. All right, we'll just kind of blend this in a little bit. There we go. Now I still would like to get the highlights on her face, so let's take some titanium white, a bit of Indian yellow, organic orange, a little bit more Indian yellow. A little bit more titanium white. Okay, this looks like a pretty good color to work with. And we'll go ahead and we'll place that right on the top of her forehead here. Just get a little bit of that sense of the lighting there. Blend it into the mid-tones a bit. Pyro orange, place that on the side here, just get a secondary color to blend into. Just create a little bit of a nuance. You can also dab it with your finger, which you can use to blend as long as your finger is fairly clean and you don't have other colors on there. Add a nice uh, highlight on the nose. Stronger light here. Add some titanium white here. And uh, we'll just place it right on the top of that. Just a hint of Indian yellow. Yep, just a hint of Indian yellow on this lightest color. And you can see the range I have from dark to light here. Again, let's get that right on the top. That might be about as much as we're going to get from that. A little bit of a highlight under the eyelid area on the top of the cheek, develop a little form there. Just a bit of three-dimensionality in that part. Uh, get a little more light on this area here by her nose because that area is supposed to be pretty bright. Just want to make sure I can warm it up. If you ever get muddy skin tones, just add a little bit of a warmer color like organic orange or Indian yellow, and you'll find that often uh, will help. By the way, if you'd like my free resource, Fix Muddy Skin Tones in your acrylic portrait, you can download that in the link I have in the description. And it's also in the top comment as well. Fix muddy skin tones in your acrylic portrait. A PDF guide uh, that shows you several tips on how to fix muddy skin tones in your portrait. Print it out, put it in your device when you're painting. And uh, a lot of students have loved that guide. So I'm sure that's gonna be helpful for you as well. Okay, now we're going to continue just blend this in. 
Add a little bit of shading on the side. Yeah, a little bit of a warmer tone, just slight, slight yellowish hue to give it some variety. I want to get a little gradation on this bottom part of her cheek. So I'm going to the darker kind of color. Again, notice my range from dark to light. And I just kind of pull from those specific areas and just want to can develop another sense of gradation and shading here that I can blend out of wet on wet here. Develop a little more form on that cheek. I'll get a little bit of um, organic orange and natural red into this uh, left cheek. I'll put that in right here because that's got to get a little bit more of a reddish color. And let's pull from this darker part of the mixture there and we'll add it in. Notice I like using a round brush quite a bit. It gives me a lot of uh, precision as far as where my certain colors and nuances are placed. Okay, we're gonna a little bit of a lighter color on the nose. And just want to and get some more gradation here if we can. That's a lot of shading on the nose because it's a very round form. So we got to make sure we get all those different uh, nuances in. Get a little bit of a lighter color down here on the bottom of the chin. A little bit right there, that's good. Let's see if I can darken that left side of the jaw just so it stands out a little more against the background. But you want a cooler tone. Add some raw umber dark to that. And a little bit of this darker color from the hair and we'll place that in. Right there. And then we'll darken it a little bit more just on this bottom plane. I think we're getting pretty close to running out of time here. But it is fun. Time yourself, see what you can do. Let's get a little bit of a darker edge right here. Oh. Now I'm just going to go until <laughs> until this uh, stops ticking. Let's add a couple of interruptions here. So I add a little bit of raw umber dark and ultramarine blue. And I just wanted to darken those eyebrows a little bit more. Yeah, just get a little more clarity on the eyebrows. And a little bit on the hair, just darken that a bit more. All right, we better stop right here. There's obviously more that I could do and would like to do if I had the time. Um, however, it's not bad. Not bad at all for just 30 minutes. I mean, I like the overall sense of some of the form and the areas, you know, like with the, the cheeks and everything and the lips. Uh, some of the shapes got a little bit, uh, you know, not quite accurate to the photo but that could all be adjusted you know the the hair could be maybe a little thicker we could add some more planes of shading on top of the forehead um but overall you know i like the gesture of it and a lot of it really could be refined if i was going to turn this into you know a commission painting or uh some other painting where i wanted it to look more refined it could easily be adjusted even when i have some of the proportions off on the face uh, that can all be fixed as long as we have the general form uh, so yeah I, I like how this turned out especially since i haven't done these for a while and i would encourage you to try a 30 minute acrylic portrait again it's just to see what you can do um, just to you know loosen up in your painting again grow in your skills as far as 
composition, anatomy, likeness, value, skin tones, um, things like that. And then you could push it further. You could refine and uh, work on your blending skills and your detail skills if you wanted to take the 30 minute exercise and maybe add another half an hour to it or two hours, you know. I think with a start like this, I could probably add a few more hours and get a pretty nice looking painting. But for 30 minutes, I'm happy with it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, be sure to get my Fix Muddy Skin Tones in your acrylic portrait guide in the link below the video and in the top comment. And uh, keep in touch. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to see me do more of these 30-minute acrylic portrait exercise videos, let me know that as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.